What's going on, riders? It's Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys a video on carburetor synchronization. All right, I'll be using two different style gauges. One is the tried and true vacuum gauge that you can get from almost anywhere. Um, and then I'm going to be doing a old school style with the mercury gauges. We're actually going to do a side by side comparison to see which one is better, which one's giving me a more accurate result, or if they're exactly the same, okay? The first thing I want you guys to know is that carburetor synchronization has nothing to do with what the jets are giving the engine, okay? It does not affect if it's lean or rich. It has nothing to do with that. Number two, carburetor synchronization can only be done on multiples of two or more carburetors. You don't know how many times I hear people say, they have, they have a single carb set up. I know that they have a single carb set up and they're asking for a carburetor synchronization. You can't do it, all right? So don't worry about it. If you have a single carb set up, this video is not for you, all right? Get out. Number three, carburetor synchronization should only be really done after a very, either a long period of time, let's say 24,000 miles or more, because carburetors get out of sync at a very, very slow rate. And it's really mainly from vibration Okay, or if the carburetors are split. All right, just because you clean the carbs does not necessarily mean it needs to be synced. Two completely different things. Carburetor synchronization, simply put, is just fine tuning the adjustment of vacuum going through each individual carb. You're just lining everything up, okay? Again, it has nothing to do with what the jets are doing, but it has to do with what each carb is intaking through the mouth of the carb. All right, in line four. So you see these butterfly plates in each one. Carburetor synchronization is making sure that all of these plates are raising and lowering at the same time. All right, that's what we're trying to adjust. It's a very, very fine tune of the carburetor. I think it's more like a characteristic thing. You clean the carbs, great. You want to put your final touch on it, sync the carburetors. Symptoms. Yes, if the carburetor synchronization is off, it may not run. I totally agree with you if it's way off. But usually it just causes bad gas mileage. Um, some weird kind of noises popping up through the carb. Erratic idle. Those are the kind of things that come from carburetor synchronization. Not my bike runs like junk, so I need to sink the carbs to get it straight. It's not the case. So let's get right into it now. I don't want to waste any more of you guys this time. We'll be using a CB750 Nighthawk, okay? This is actually my bike that we'll be digging into, all right? We're gonna sync each carb. I'm gonna show you guys some important things to remember and what to look for if you, let's say, you have a different style carb set up because there are two different style carbs that need the carb sync. All right, so the first thing that you wanna find on your motorcycle, say you have a V-twin, inline four, are where you actually plug the carb sync probes in at, okay? On here on this bike, they're usually located almost always on the intake boots of the carb because this is a constant force right in right through here this is a metered section and then this would be constant so you, you should find little phillips head screws or some kind of port that you can go into straight on the intakes we're going to unscrew each one of these bolts and put a probe in that comes with the kit that i have the bike has to be operating temperature so go ahead and fire it up get it running so it's nice and warm so where I'll be making my adjustments at is very important. All right, so on the V-twin carburetor systems, you're gonna find it right directly in the center of the carburetors, okay? Now, again, doing carburetor sinks, they're all the same, all right, I, I promise you. I don't care how many carbs you have, but I'm showing you on the inline four, take this with a grain of salt that you can do the exact same thing on your V-twin. Don't get discouraged because I'm not doing the V-twin. Again, V-twin carbs, it's right directly in the middle. You can kind of look straight down inside the between the two carbs you'll find a little flathead um, Phillips head screw that you can adjust all right on these inline fours it's a little bit different if you have more than three carburetors there's going to be a kind of like a captain carb all right it's one carburetor called the base carb that everything gets synced to because obviously you have to have some kind of setting for everything to be set to so they made it super simple and only made three adjustments all right, there's one screw, two screw, three screw. It's carb one, three, and four. Carb two on this bike is the base carb. So when I hook my gauge set up, number two will be what I'm gonna base everything off of. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you guys, but that's very, very important to know. And if you had a manual, it would tell you that, all right? 
The screw that I will be messing with is here, which is number four, here, which is number three, and all the way over on this side, you have this one, which is number one, all right? When there, there is no screw for number two. All right. So let's hook this thing up and see where it's at. Also, just to let you guys know on my bike, I'm actually running a, vac a non-vacuum operated petcock. I covered the vacuum hose with this. If you have a vacuum operated petcock, you're gonna be using that port for your line on the carb sink kit. Okay, so I have mine capped off. I'm simply just gonna put my hose straight onto it. So the cool thing about these K&L carb sink kits is that they offer some pretty cool um, stems for, for the carbs. Sometimes it's kind of hard to get in there. They give me some longer ones and some shorter ones. I absolutely love them. I actually use them for my Mercury set, to be honest with you. On this set, they actually have a little dial here that allows you to adjust how much vacuum they're actually sucking to kind of slow that needle down. What it does is it really just tightens the needle so it's not bouncing like crazy. So you might see me messing with them. I'm not making any adjustments to the carbs, I promise. I'm just making them so you guys can actually read them. Obviously, number four is gonna go into number four carb, number three, and then number three, number two, number two, so on and so forth, all right? Then we're gonna fire the bike up and we're gonna see where they're at. All right guys, let's have a look. So I've made no adjustments to these carbs. I simply just started it up to see where they were at. Remember when I said that number two is our base carburetor. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this needle up a little bit just so we can see where it's at. So it looks like you want about, you want them close to each other, okay? They don't have to be perfect. I like to get them perfect. But Honda says you can have them within a half an inch of each other or even an inch. So these are almost all in line except this one. This one seems to be off a little bit. I'm gonna tighten this up, tighten this one up, and look at that one, it's kind of below 20. All right, so let's, let's make an adjustment, all right? I'm gonna feed some gas into the bike, make sure it's still getting some fuel. I'm gonna turn it clockwise. See how that brings it in line? I can hear the bike almost running the sound a lot better, a lot smoother. Let's add some gas, make sure she's still doing okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shut the bike off. After you've made your adjustment, it's important to do this, okay? Grab the throttle, give it a couple of snapbacks. What you're doing is you're setting those butterflies kind of back into a seat, all right? So you're snapping the throttle, it allows them to snap back and kind of rest in a place or in a pocket that they enjoy, okay? So then I'm, I'm gonna start the bike back up. We're gonna double check the setting and see if it changed at all. If it changed at all, no problem. Make another adjustment and you're gonna keep going back and forth until you are happy with it. I'm happy with it now, but let's see how it does after I snap the throttle back. It doesn't get much better than that, y'all. The cool thing about these gauges as well is that you're actually allowed to rev it up. If you use the really cheap blue um, fluid style or even the mercury style, you have to be really careful with how much throttle you give the bike because you can suck that stuff straight into the cylinder. That would not be cool. So on this one, I kind of, that's why I, I do like these because you can rev it up, kind of make sure the vacuum's all the same and call it done. Side note, Make sure you guys don't have any vacuum leaks going on. If you have a vacuum leak anywhere past the carb exhaust leak or anything like that on the intake manifold, it's going to throw your readings way off. You'll be chasing it for months. Ask me, tell me why it's not working on my bike. Make sure you don't have any vacuum leaks, all right? Start a fluid with your friend. Remember that old video I showed you guys. Now, let's check out the old and graceful mercury gauges, okay? This is the one that I use every time. 
sometimes I, re I, re I revert back to the dowel gauges because they actually do work. But let's see and show you guys a comparison to see how close these are. Again, what I was saying about that inch, the mercury is going to rise up and sit into a point between these lines. The goal is to have them all in between these lines. All right. So we saw that the dial gauges were spot on. Let's see how spot on they are when it comes to this one. So as you can see, that number four is giving me a problem again. It's showing that it's actually above where I would like it to be. So let's go ahead and make that adjustment again so I know for a fact that it's inside. Shut the bike off, snap the throttle back, start it back up. So, mercury gauges seem to be a little bit more accurate to me. Um, the vacuum set that I do have gets you in that space where you want it to be. To be completely honest with you guys, I think the mercury gauges are solid. All right, but they're hard to find. So I do trust the vacuum gauges as well. All right, guys, so we dialed them all in. Key points, again, I want to leave you guys with. Carburetor synchronization does, is not a cure-all for your carburetors. All right, it's a final touch to the carbs. If your bike runs like junk, it probably runs like junk because of what's going on inside the carburetor, not the synchronization up front, okay? But these are all dialed in. You can button everything back up again um, make sure again you have no vacuum leaks going on. You can do that quickly by just taking some starter fluid, spraying around points that are important, and seeing if the idle picks up. Now, another thing I want to tell you guys is because my carb sink was not way far off like a lot of bikes will be, you may notice that when you are adjusting the carb sink, the idle will drop and, go, and maybe the bike will even shut off if they're way off, or the bike will, RPMs will increase. It's fine. Okay, you're bringing them back into where they should be. Make your adjustments to the idle adjustment screw to make sure it's just idling where it should, where it needs to be. All right, so if it drops, there's no problem. If it raises, don't worry about it. You are fine tuning, okay? It's supposed to do that. Mine actually increased a little bit. I made the adjustment. Thank you guys so much for checking it out again. This is Cody from Motorcycle MD, giving you guys quality tips for your one-offs or your daily ride. I can't wait to see you guys next time. Make sure you subscribe, click the button above, all right? It will allow you to get all this content straight to your email. You won't miss anything. Can't wait to see you guys next time. Later.